Later. First of all, I'm too versatile alone With a style and tone that rings like a xylophone A new era and you can't compile your own Forget milestones, kid, my miles are stone I call you and your men out, stay in your place Y'all cats doing spin outs to stay in a race But it ain't the case of who's right or wrong It's who's light or strong, your check engine light is on So when you go against the guard, be sure about it Cause I can spit it all day to restore logic What sure started is pure hearted, we tore started and forgot it when off topic for robotics and you know there's always some a-hole that like to look at us and say but they old he ain't pulling numbers like j soul but i'm trying to reach the kod j cole check how they fall when they check the payroll see what bdk hold a must to eat my story's been told nothing sweet matter of fact hey yo yo see yo fuck the beat I should mumble my raps, that's just what they probably tell me, so I'll be trapped in the closet like Robert Kelly. You ain't a Machiavelli, you a mock. Welcome to the Nicole Harris Show. Let me get to the point. I am Nicole Harris, and thank you so much for tuning in with me today. Let's just get right into that Big Daddy Kane freestyle with Funk Master Flex that you just saw and heard. I liked it. I really, really liked it. Um, I think it was true Big Daddy Kane style. Um, I love all the old school hip hop uh, rappers and, and all that music. So um, to me, it was just like he never stopped so i liked i enjoyed the freestyle but the thing that really bothered me is when i read some of the comments <clears throat> on um funk master flex's page the disrespect is like <laughs> like really um first of all respect him because he paved the way for a lot of You so-called rappers and people who really can't even rap just on there just to have it a have an opinion like be quiet i know um when i used to substitute teach um and i used to tell the class when they were like really loud i would say if you're talking that means you're not listening and i really think that that uh applies to a lot of the people who just chit chat on Instagram, learn how to be quiet and just listen. You're a student of the game. Like, really, be quiet. Anyway, so shout out to Big Daddy Kane um, and Funk Master Flex for that freestyle. It was what I needed. And I just ate. If you um, guys were on Instagram on my page, you saw that I made the noodle bowl and it was delicious. <sighs> I'm trying not to fall asleep. <laughs> it was so good. I'm so full. It was so good. Um, <clears throat> I don't really rock with Chinese food and all those things. I'd rather just make my food at home. That way I know what I'm putting in it, what I'm adding, what I like and don't like. So... I would rather spend all my money buying the ingredients that I like and that way I can tweak it and make it the way um, that I love. So, yeah, um, go on there and check out some of the pictures. Um, let me see what else. Okay. Also, too, I want to play for you a little bit about... Um, some of the things that I saw on Instagram. Oh, before I get started, um, happy Kwanzaa to everyone. Um, I hope you're out celebrating and um, having fun with family and friends. I know I am. I'm trying to catch up on rest, but I never do. But <laughs> I'm trying. But I am enjoying family and friends, so that part is good. Um, <clears throat> So let me get into it. Um, some of the things that I saw this weekend or this week, this last past week, that really got on my, that really just bothered me. If I see it and I don't post about it, that really means that it's really, you know, has gotten under my skin and I just don't want to 
um, act out of emotion. I don't want to just, you know, um, speak on it because it's a lot of things that take that go into processing the things that we're seeing because I think that and I'll go back the things that we see are seeing on social media and on the news it affects us whether we like to admit it or not it's affecting us um all the shootings, the the fights, the disrespect, the police, people in the public, it it affect it affects me. So I know it affects you all, and um, negatively. And it's not helping to keep watching a lot of these things, consuming these things over and over and over again. I don't even click on the play button sometimes when I know what's about to happen I can't watch it repeatedly all the time so I just keep it moving but um this bothered me uh this uh, uh let's see that he's a high schooler Andrew Johnson is the one who had to cut off his locks in order to wrestle and they um they know that the referee is a known racist uh his name is alan maloney i believe and he the the uh the high schooler andrew johnson is i believe he's mixed i think his mom is white and his dad is black and he has uh dreads in his hair and usually before the match, he will uh, cover his hair, so it's not an advantage uh, to him, and it doesn't affect him when he's wrestling. But as you saw in the clip, the referee said that you know if he didn't um, cut his hair, then he would have to forfeit the match. And I was just heartbroken as I sat there and watched this young man's hair being cut from his head. It really just did something to my soul. Like, um, it really, I couldn't cry, but it really, it, it brought me to the point where I was in between tears and anger that I couldn't even watch it all. I just watched some of it, but it was very heartbreaking to me for this young man to experience that. Um, to children that age is devastating. He'll never forget that moment and we won't either, but for him, and it, it, it was so much more than just him cutting his hair. And that referee knew that that was It just, mm, 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 mm. I am so, I was so bothered by it because it was racism at its core. He stripped that young man of, it's, it's more than, it's more than just hair and it's more than just, oh, it'll grow back. And it's more than it, he stripped him of his pride. And I just, and we just sat there and, you know, we just watched it. And um, I'm, I still get upset when I think about it. Just seeing the video, it is, um, I'm just outraged about it. I think 
um, they have come out on CNN um, making a statement, the school made a statement about they wouldn't um, participate in any of the uh, matches that he's refereeing. And I'm like, <laughs> really, is that it? Um, there's no reprimand, there's nothing gonna happen. But you know what? Mm, it really irked my nerve. Um, yeah, but moving on to this next clip. Number one thing America exports is black culture. Like our style is everywhere. Yeah, but more importantly, we got to continue to know that we created. Yeah, that's right. As black people, mm. like we got to continue to let people know and and not get down when people try to steal it. No. You know, because it happens every single day. People steal our style. They steal our culture. They steal our words. They steal how we dress, how we feel, what we drink, what we eat, everything. And we can't allow that to be a point where it's like, oh, man, we ain't getting the credit. It's almost like you got to be like, oh, shit, we got to do it even harder. Exactly. Like, like everything that we do, we move the needle. That's right. And we got to continue to do This clip about LeBron James and all of the rest of the, um, I think it was, he was saying, all the surrounding comments that offended Jew the Jewish community. And LeBron James was saying, one of the comments that he was saying in the interview was he was speaking about culture vultures and how they um, steal everything from us. They take our style. They take everything that we do and they steal it. And um, I agree with him. We all know that. We all know that that's been happening since the beginning of time. Just the way they sold the country and everything else. I mean, it's no secret. The one part um, I did kind of like have to play back and listen to is when he said, um, even though those things are happening, he was almost insinuating like we can't get down because of those things. We have to just go harder. Mm -mm. No, sir. That's the wrong message, <laughs> in my opinion. I mean, I I um I like and respect uh, LeBron James. I I really do. I love everything about him. He's very family oriented. Um, he handles his business on and off court, and I salute that brother. I like everything about him, but I just think it's uh, we have to watch some of the things that we say and are being said because it can send the wrong message, especially to the youth. I know um, some of the people, some of you all probably caught it, but I'm just thinking about some of the youth, youth who may not have caught what he was saying. I thought it was troubling to me because um, he was saying to me, don't worry about them stealing everything or anything that we do. Just continue to keep going harder. <clears throat> and my whole thing is, um, no, sir, because at some point we need to address the things that's going on, especially with um, music. You see it with music all the time. Like I said, uh, my daughter listens to a pop group, this BTS uh, group for you all who haven't seen them. They are um, a, a Korean pop group. And I had posted a picture of, let me see, it was, it was months ago about a Korean guy who wanted to um, get his hair to look, I guess, like African-American or African. And he got it kind of like so it would be thicker and knottier, kind of like the styles that you see guys wearing now uh, with the fade and um, the hair on top or whatever. And I was, you know, that's a prime example of like culture vulture. And so I think he was in China or he was Chinese or I don't know what he was, but this BTS group, they did the same thing when they first came out. They had their hairstyle 
like that and um, they're very popular uh, they're a very popular group here in the United States as well and I just think it, it's interesting because I watched some of the videos with her about them but you know um, becoming um, I guess successful in the business and they have flew some black guys out to Korea where they were to basically teach them how to be more, I don't know, how to be more hip, if that's what you want. Y'all know how old I am. Don't, don't act like, <laughs> I guess more hood. I don't know what, like how to wear hip hop clothes. I guess more about the culture, how to, how to act around girls. They, oh. They brought in black girls and basically set them around them to see how they would act and to guess, I guess, to prompt them and show them what to do and how to act to be cooler, to be more like black people, if I'm going to be totally honest. And, you know, and we were sitting there watching it and I was like, you know, I asked my daughter, I was like, what do you think about, you know, what are, what they're doing? And she was like, you know, Mom, I like them as a group, but I don't like that they just can't be themselves. Like, I think I would like them even if they were just like a Korean group. Like, I don't think that they have to act black in order for me to like them. She said, I just genuinely like the way they sing and, you know, because they're different. And I was just glad that, you know, she kind of got that and understood what was going on. And, you know, I a lot of people um, feel some kind of way because I don't really um, like that part of the culture vulture thing. Like, I will speak up about it. Um, I'm not so easily or read, readily... Um, wanting to invite certain people to the cookout if you will like I I still I listen and y'all gonna be mad I know for the ones who really love hip hop I'm Eminem and I've said it before on other pages Eminem is not coming to the cookout that's great I mean I see guys on hip hop pages going so hard for this dude. And yeah, he may be nice or whatever. That's not really my style, but I'm just like, listen. Um the money that he's making is taken away from something that's your art that you started, that you cultivated and made something out of nothing and I just don't think that you should give it up that easily and I think because of that that's why we have so so much craziness going on right now within the hip-hop community Yeah, let's see. Going back to LeBron James. Um, yeah, so he made a comment about uh, the Jewish community, and then another rapper came out, and he apologized, and then Meek Mills came out and stood up, took up for him. And then at the end, he said, you know, I don't want to get in trouble. I don't want to get in trouble either. I just got out of jail. So the Jewish man and um, the Jewish community everyone has to apologize to them now i mean it's just like i don't know i'm really into like men standing up for themselves and i think the only way that you can be able to hold your head up and stand up for yourself and not have to apologize and mean what the hell you say is if you're self-made if if you're your own person um if you have your own stuff if you own your own things, you don't have anything to apologize for. So 
That goes back to Kevin Hart and apologizing for the award show, the uh, what is it, the Oscars, and all the, apologize, apologize, apologize for what? I mean, honestly, grow some. <laughs> I mean that though. I I really do mean that. Like, me, I cannot. A man just has to be a man to me. Like, really. It's some things that you're just not going to... You're not going to let somebody, you know, take your pride. I'm No, I'm not apologizing. I don't care what gig I'm not going to get. Because, uh, you know, you have to go home... Well, you have to face yourself first. But then you have to go home and face your wife and your children. And I'm just, I would be looking like... <laughs> What? What could be? What money could be so great? What career could be so good that they had you looking like a fool in front of everybody? I, I, I just cannot. I can't. I can't with these guys and these apologizing and, you know, um. I, I talked about the uh, independent. Um, artists that I follow on Instagram and I think you guys just need to take a take a page from him because it's like y'all out here looking like some looking like you know mm -mm, females <laughs> nicely put um yeah mm. so yeah that's really what I have to say on that matter. I did want to let you guys know that I am getting together the girls. I think it's about 10 of us and we're going to do a round table talk and we're going to be discussing everything from um, love and relationships and mental health and health and diet and fashion and hair and clothes and everything so i'm looking forward to that we're getting that together i am going to videotape some of the podcast so i can actually see you and we can interact more and some of them are just going to be solely with me you know talking on a podcast like this um but i'm enjoy. i'm still enjoy enjoying um podcasting getting my thoughts out there I want some feedback from you guys like what are some of the things that you want to talk about what are some of the issues and then let me know what are the solutions what can we do to um, fix some of the things that's going on because like I said I'm trying to get to the point of what's going on but also to we need to talk about solutions. And so the thing about, um, I said with apologizing, all this apologizing going on, the solutions is to, to that is to own your own self, be self-made. That's the only way you can really stand up and be a man is, you know, to have your own. Also, too, things like that with that referee, those things should never happen and should never happen again. Um, that's being more attentive with your children. Like, um, what was his father? I believe his father's black. Uh, he should have been at that meet. I know they can't be at everything, but it's just, <laughs> and you know, you as parents, we can't be everywhere. And I understand that, but those are the, some things and lessons that you go into with your t uh, children. Um, I don't know what kind of talks he has with them about his sons because they are black men. But um, I think he's going to, if he hasn't, I think he's going to start you now because, uh, yeah, they're affected by, you know, the things that go on in this society. And it's bad that he had to see it and experience it this way. But those things do and are happening 
So, you know, you still have to talk to your children about the things that's going on, about the scenarios, about the things that has happened and may happen to him so that they won't happen again. But, yeah, it, um, uh, me as a parent, um, cutting my child's hair, um, it would have been some reper it would have been some furniture move. <laughs> And some furniture moving up in there. Shout out to Bernie Mac. We miss him. Rest in peace. Um, but yeah, it would have been some smoke in the city. I, I really, that was really disturbing to me. You know, yeah, and so what are some of the solutions and things that we can do to put in place and implement for our youth and make sure us as a black community is always protected it seems like we're always on the defense like we're always making reactionary um, moves against things and attacks that are happening to us um, I just want to get to a point where we're um, where we're actually you know making moves and not reacting to things that's happening to us and so I'm going to leave it at that um, again if you have any feedback, if you have any input about the show, please leave me some comments. And um, I'm going to get quicker as I learn more about, like I said on the last video, about editing and doing those things. I want to make sure it's right and that you enjoy the podcast. And so um, with that being said, I hope you guys have a good day evening morning whatever you're doing right now i hope it's well and until the next podcast peace